woman is changing her clothes. Flesh-colored stockings wrapped tightly around her calves to make her figure more sexy. The boy outside the door could not help but gulp as he watched the erotic scene. The woman jerked her head up to look at him. The boy panicked and fled. A few days later, he came back to Hannah's house. When Hannah saw him, she told him to dig for coal without hesitation. Then he seemed to be digging for coal with his face. Hannah couldn't help but laugh and told him to take a shower. By the time Hannah brought him a bath towel, behind the towel was Hannah's undressed body. The 15-year-old boy fell in love with her. Michael had felt sick on the bus three months earlier and stumbled off the bus. He threw up in a dark alleyway in a cold sweat. At that moment, a woman came over and wiped off his sweat and helped him clean up the dirty floor. Hannah saw him staring and pulled him up. It was like pulling him out of the darkness. She reassured him that it was okay. The rain had stopped outside and there was a little snow. Hannah walked him out and told him to take care of himself. Michael looked back at her with sadness in his eyes. He had scarlet fever, a contagious disease. When his mother found out, she simply told him to stay away from her and left. He was in quarantine for three months before he recovered. As soon as he recovered, he bought a bouquet of flowers and went to thank Hannah. Hannah was doing laundry at the time. Michael saw her and raised the bouquet to his chest. His devotion, his warmth, finally touched Hannah. Michael came home and said he was well enough to board at school. Every day after school, he ran to Hannah's house and indulged in her loving care. Hannah is a train conductor, and Michael was a student who loved literature. He found a book and read a few lines in Greek. Hannah doesn't understand it but finds it beautiful. She asked Michael to read the book aloud. From then on, reading aloud became a daily ritual for them. Michael read aloud to Hannah from a variety of books. They snuggled together and murmured, as if nothing in the world could disturb them. But in reality, their relationship could not be made public. One day, Michael jumped on Hannah's bus and stood in the second car to greet her. But Hannah thought that Michael was too ashamed of their relationship to go up to her. She was furious and even threw Michael out, saying that Michael wasn't that important to her. Michael stood outside the door with tears in his eyes. After a while he walked back in and said to Hannah, I can't live without you. Hannah was touched by the teenager's frankness. They made up again. Hannah kept calling Michael her son, and Michael continued to read aloud day after day. He wanted to go on a trip with Hannah and made plans. Hannah didn't even look at the plans and said yes. They rode their bikes through the countryside. Michael took Hannah to dinner. Hannah looked at the menu and frowned. See. Finally she chose the same dish as Michael. The teenager and a middle-aged woman were eating. But when the owner took the money, she said customarily, may your mother enjoy her meal. However, the next moment, he kissed the middle-aged woman. The boss is dumbfounded. Michael smiled smugly, but Hannah is at a loss. As they passed a church, Hannah heard the children singing and walked into the church. By the time Michael parked his bike and found Hannah, Hannah was sitting in a pew, watching the children in tears. The sun was shining on her, and it was beautiful. Michael gazed at Hannah and smiled with tenderness. Shortly after, Michael's birthday came around. He turned down the party. His classmates threw for him and rushed home to celebrate with Hannah. However, it wasn't a happy day. During that day, Hannah's supervisor told her that she had been promoted because of her outstanding work and that she could work in an office from now on. But instead of being happy, she felt very anxious. Michael knew nothing about it. He complained that Hannah never once thought of him, not even on his birthday. The two of them have a fight like never before. Michael tried to kiss Hannah by force. However, he was slapped in the face. They both calmed down after the slap. Hannah asked Michael to read aloud War and Peace. Michael took off his clothes and stood in the bathtub. Hannah rubbed the dirt off his body with a towel. From his feet to his legs to his chest, Michael looked at her quietly the whole time. Then Hannah hugged Michael and said it was time for him to go back. Back to school. Back to his peers. Michael listened to her and went back to celebrate his birthday with his classmates. But he didn't feel well. By the time he realized something was wrong and ran back to Hannah's house. Her house was empty. Hannah had left without saying goodbye. He looked at the empty house and didn't know what to do. Little did he know that this one summer relationship would affect Michael for the rest of his life. In 1966, Michael went to law school. He remained aloof and distant from the advances of his female classmates. It was as if no one could get inside his head. One day, the teacher took them to court to learn. While Michael was still sorting through his things, he heard a familiar name and stopped dead in his tracks. Then he looked up and looked down. He immediately recognized Hannah, whom he had not seen for eight years. At that moment, Hannah was standing in the dock. In 1943, Hannah applied for a job as a guardswoman in a German concentration camp. While she was on guard duty, 
She selected 10 people for execution every day. Hannah said that this was to make room for those behind her. Her understatement shocked everyone, but in reality, she was confused. Well, what would you have done? She thought she was just going about her daily business. The judge was speechless. The survivor pointed out that Hannah favored the young girls. She kept them in her room to read her books, but she would have sent them away anyway. Michael looked at Hannah in shock. The woman who once listened to the chanting and wept could be an executioner, but the more heinous crimes were yet to come. This was a concentration camp for the Germany army. Countless iron frame beds were packed together so that there was no room to breathe. The beds were so small that one had to curl up on them. As the boy went further in, he saw countless shoes and clothes. Each set of clothes thrown here symbolizes a dead soul. He bowed his head in awe in the darkness of the camp. He was so happy with Hannah that summer, so he never explored Hannah's past, but he saw Hannah eight years later when she became a war criminal. In 1944, Hannah and the other guards were in charge of moving the prisoners, but a fire killed 300 people. Only a mother and daughter escaped. The daughter grew up and wrote a book about the experience and accused Hannah and the guards of murder. Because they were locked in the house when the fire started, no one opened the door and no one rescued them. The judge asked Hannah why she didn't open the door. Hannah replied that it was their duty to keep the prisoners locked up. They couldn't let the prisoners escape. She had a very simple thought. It was her job, so she couldn't fail in her duty. After the incident, the guards wrote a report. But now the other guards are saying that Hannah wrote the report. They say she's the one responsible for the deaths of 300 people. Hannah couldn't defend herself against the guards' excuses. When the judge asked to compare the handwriting, Hannah hesitated. Then she pleaded guilty to criminal mastermind. Michael looked at Hannah with disbelief. It was at this moment that he finally realized something was wrong with Hannah. Once, Hannah had loved him reading aloud, but she had never looked through the books. Hannah didn't even read the plans he made, and Hannah was staring at the menu because she couldn't read or write, so the report couldn't have been written by her either. But she was too ashamed to tell the truth about her illiteracy. Michael was in a huge dilemma. He knew the truth, and he knew that if he told the truth, the outcome of the trial would change. But he also knew that Hannah was reluctant to talk about it. After hearing Michael's confusion, the teacher said, It doesn't matter how we feel, it's what we do that matters. So Michael offered to meet with Hannah, but he eventually hesitated and left the prison. In the end, Hannah was convicted as the mastermind. In the courtroom, she was cursed and scolded, and Michael looked at Hannah with tears streaming down his face. As the years passed, Michael grew from a teenager to a man. He got married and divorced and had a daughter, but he was always alone, and no one understood him. Michael was packing up his house and found many books, the books that he had bought for Hannah. As he looked through the books, he had an idea. A few days later, Hannah in prison received a delivery containing several cassettes and a tape recorder. She put the tapes in the tape recorder. The moment she heard the familiar voice, she pressed the pause button with a trembling hand. At that moment, Hannah's hair was gray and she was no longer sexy and beautiful. She pressed the start button again with a trembling hand. She closed her eyes as she listened to Michael's voice. Later, Michael sent many more tapes. He read them to Hannah as gently as he had done when she was a teenager. Hannah got up the courage to go into the library to borrow some books. Little by little, she learned to read and write as Michael read aloud. Then she wrote a letter and sent it to Michael. It was a short letter, just one sentence. When Michael read it, he was silent for a long time. He was ashamed of Hannah. He kept those letters safe, but it didn't answer her. A few years later, the warden called Michael to tell him that Hannah was about to be released from prison. Michael was the only one who had contact with Hannah all these years. She wanted Michael to take care of Hannah when she got out of prison. After many years, Michael finally walked into the prison and met Hannah. Hannah was excited and offered her hand to Michael. You've grown up, kid. When Michael heard that, he withdrew his hand. He had a past that he didn't want to bring up again. He arranged a job for Hannah and found her an apartment. He was coming to get Hannah out of prison next week. But Hannah never wanted to get out of prison. She sat her day in her cell and stared at her books. Then she put the books on the table and stood on top of them. Michael brought a bouquet of flowers when he came to pick Hannah up, just like he did when he was a teenager. But he didn't see Hannah after all. The warden took him to Hannah's room and handed him a tin cup of tea. In her will, Hannah instructed Michael to give her money to the survivors of the fire. Michael takes the tin cup across the ocean and finds the former survivors. He makes amends to the survivors in Hannah's place. 
The survivors asked him why he was doing this. He was silent for a moment and said, When I was young, I had an affair with Hannah. This last survivor took the Ting Kong. She was in no position to forgive Hannah in place of anyone else. So they donated the money to an organization that encourages reading and hoped that there would be less illiteracy. After all, war is terrible. It's enough to manipulate people's hearts and destroy their conscience. At the end of the film, Michael takes his daughter to Hannah's grave. He tells his story with Hannah for the first time. From then on, he is no longer trapped in a cage of memories. The pain of the past is gone with the wind. But in his heart, there will always be a 15-year-old boy reading to his lover on a summer afternoon.